there is a really big question that I I've had so many people asking and many people especially Jehovah's Witnesses they they wonder why should I consider being a Christian I think I'm a Christian and this is the same question that we're going to answer today it's going to be a kind of rather long uh, longer teaching today because I want us to be able to understand why Jehovah's Witnesses they need to consider becoming Christians. And this is not about bashing you, Jehovah's Witnesses. I just want you to listen and understand in the best way possible as the Spirit of God leads us. Now, perhaps the most important commonality between the evangelical Christians and uh, Jehovah's Witnesses is a... Uh, is our belief and trust in the Bible as the ultimate authority inspired by God on issues concerning God and his expectation for us. While we may understand things differently, Jehovah's Witnesses are to be highly commended for their dependence on and diligence in studying the Holy Scriptures to know God and his will just like the Bereans you remember the Bereans let me just show you something about them uh, and the Bereans immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews so now Paul and Silas they are preaching in Berea the Jews of Berea the Christians of Berea and uh, the Bible says, these people, these Bereans, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So, it's really amazing to see how the people, Jehovah's Witnesses, many of them, they behave like the Bereans. They love reading the Bible and examining, uh, examining all things in life in light of the scriptures. So to that end, we shall examine verses of the New World Translation Bible that, uh, that uh, 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 the Jehovah's Witnesses have, okay, or the one that they read a lot, which is the version of the published which is published by the watchtower society i'm sure you've heard about their bible it's called the the jehovah's witness bible we're going to come here in just a bit okay so that we can clear up some common misunderstandings today now first and foremost we have to see if we talk about christians the word christians or the Christians themselves, they get their name from being followers and worshippers of Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us that the first time Christians were called Christians, according to the book of Acts 11.26, is that the disciples were called Christians first in a place called Antioch during Paul's ministry. So, this is a, just a small picture about Antioch, if you can check in the map. That's where they were called Christians. And Paul repeatedly made it clear that to be a Christian, you had to be a witness to men concerning the person of Christ. That Christ, that anointed one. Christ means anointed one. Okay? So you had to be a witness to the world and uh, the works of Christ. You say, this is what I saw. And this is what I believe. Okay? That's why the apostles had to be witnesses of what Christ did. That's why they were called Christians. If you're witnessing what I'm probably telling people on something. Let's say I, I, I'm campaigning to be an MP. And I'm helping people in some projects. 
So the people who follow me, they are going to be called Kithians. Are you seeing the point? So now Christians are people who follow what Jesus was doing here on earth. But now we see Jehovah's Witnesses, on the other hand, when you look at Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that we are to focus our worship exclusively on God the Father. Okay? God the Father, Jehovah, who is referred to in some Bible translations as Jehovah, God the Father, some tra tra translations, they, they call him Jehovah. And uh, we have to understand that the name Jehovah, however, was a hybrid name created by uh, Christians by adding the vowels of the tetragrammaton, Yahweh, which is the original rendering of what we now know as Yahweh, Okay, so evangelical Christians understood uh, Jesus to be God and they understand Jesus to be God in all his fullness and in equal deity. Okay, Jesus is God. Let me show you. There's somewhere here, I just put something here concerning the Trinity. Okay, so the evangelical Christians, they understand that Jesus is God in all his fullness. He's God. Equal in deity, but different in functions from God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Christians acknowledge that one of the historic names for God the Father is Jehovah. Okay, that one we agree. However, there are many other names and titles that the scripture uses in reference to God the Father. Now, again, we have to understand before we even continue that Jehovah's Witnesses understand Jesus to be Michael, the archangel. Okay? They say that Jesus is Michael, the archangel, and categorically deny his deity, that he's not God. He's just a, an angel, but a very high angel. And uh, as we shall see, if we understand Jesus to be anything other than God, many verses present obvious contradictions. However, we know that God's word is inerrant and does not contradict itself. Therefore, we must understand the truth of God's word in a way that is consistent and faithful to his revelation. You will notice that these same verses lack any contradiction if we understand Jesus to be God, the Son, the fullness of God in bodily form. Where is this? The Trinity. If we understand, okay, Jesus is the one who surrendered his rights to be so that he can be, he, he surrendered his rights to be God so that he can be the suffering servant and sacrifice for our sins. Okay? So now, what I'm going to quote today, I'm going to quote uh, from the Jehovah's Witness Bible and I'm going to show you also from the True King James Bible different things concerning how they take one word and another and things like that so now we're going to start we're checking about god the father okay we're going to see god's glory in uh in the angle of god the father that's where we're going to start so let's let's check in the book of isaiah 42 verse 8 isaiah 42 verse 8 in the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, it says, I am Jehovah, that is my name. I give my glory to no one else, nor my praise to graven images. What does the King James Bible say? Isaiah 42, verse 8. What does it say? 
I am the Lord. You see, they changed the word Lord and they put Jehovah, which is not a problem, but I want to show you why you should not alter the Bible. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Okay, let's check Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48, uh, verse 11. 48, verse 11, Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. 48, 11. For my own sake, for my own sake, I will act. For how, eh, am, am I there? For Isaiah 48, 11, yes. For my own sake, for my own sake, I will act. For how could I let myself be profane? I give my glory to no one else. You see, the father is talking about his glory, giving it to no one else. So if he's saying he's not going to give his glory to anyone else, what does it mean? If Jesus is not God, <clears throat> then he does not deserve any glory. Of course, the same. Some verses I'll, uh, I'll just jump because they, they basically mean almost the same. Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 48, verse 11. Let me show you. It's almost the same, that one. For my own sake, even for my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. That one we agree, okay? We agree there. Now, let's look about Jesus, okay? We have seen about God the Father. Let's see. What does the Bible talk about uh, 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 Jesus? Where do I go? Yes. Talking about Jesus. Now, concerning the same thing regarding Jesus. See the book of John. Okay? The book of John. Uh, the book of John. This is talking about Jesus. Eight verse fifty four. Eight verse fifty four. Where is it? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me. The one who you say is your God. So now Jesus is saying, It is. The Father who glorifies him. Are you seeing the point? Have we just seen the Father saying he will give his glory to no one? And now here, Jesus is saying he's glorified by the Father. Are we having some contradiction here? Because he said, I will not glorify anyone. But now he's glorifying Jesus. Are you seeing? I will not even go to, to the King James because they also mean the same. I just want to focus more on the Jehovah's Witness Bible so that I can show and prove to you that Jesus is God from your own Bible. And some other places where it's been uh, 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 contradicted, I will also show you, okay? This is from your own Bible. That Jesus, talking about him being glorified by God. And again... John 16, verse 4. John 16, verse 4. See? Nevertheless, I have told you these things, so that when the hour for them to happen arrives, you will remember that I told them to you. Are you seeing? Okay? That hour, when that hour comes, uh, uh, Am, am I in the right place? Uh, John, sorry, 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 sorry. I was, I was, I was ahead of myself. John 16, 14, sorry. 14, where is it? That one will glorify me. Who? God the Father. He will glorify Jesus. And remember, God the Father, in the Old Testament, he said he will not glorify anyone except himself. Are you seeing the point here? I'm reading from Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Glorifying Jesus. That one will glorify me because he will receive from me from what is mine and will declare it to you. Are you seeing the point? Jesus being glorified here. Are you seeing the point here? Now let's go also. 
John 17, 1. John 17, 1. I, I will not, I, I will even try to avoid the King James because they'll say, oh, now I want to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to try and show you that Jesus is God. See, Jesus spoke these things and raising his eyes to heaven said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. Are you seeing the point? Jesus being glorified? Are you seeing Jesus being glorified here? And verse 5, what does he say? Look at verse 5. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory that I had alongside you before the world was. Jesus saying to his Father, glorify me. Okay. Okay. You may say, oh, Keith, that was uh, this and this. and Let's go to Philippians. Okay. Philippians 2.10. From your own Bible, the Jehovah's Witnesses, proving that Jesus is God. Philippians 2.10. See what it says here. So that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the ground, that every tongue should openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Are you seeing the point? Jesus is who? Is Lord. Is this Bible of yours saying that Jesus is the archangel? No. It's calling him Jesus is Lord. Are you seeing the point here? Let's also check one more. Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Hebrews. I want to prove using your Bible that Jesus is God. Before I even continue. Hebrews 5, verse 5. Hebrews 5, verse 5. So, too, the Christ did not glorify himself by becoming a high priest, but was glorified by the one who said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Are you seeing? This is from Jehovah's Witness Bible, proving that Jesus is God. Of course, they have corrupted in the Bible in some way, trying to, uh, you know, trying to make Jesus a bit less. But even the much they have corrupted it, it still proves that Jesus is God. He's been glorified by God the Father. Are you seeing the point here? Okay, okay, okay. We have seen about God the Father. Now, let's look about the Savior. The Savior, okay? Jesus as the Savior. I want to show you this so that you can understand. Now, let's come to your Bible. To your Bible. What it says, huh? Now, I want to show you the Savior in the aspect of God the Father. Sorry, not, not Jesus. Eh? I want to show you God the Father as the Savior. Okay? So that you can be able to understand that God the Father is the Savior. And still, God the Son is the Savior. To prove to you that both of them, they are one. God the Father being the Savior and God the Son being the Savior. Meaning, it's the same person. We are talking about here. Now, let me show you from your own Bible, from the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Let's start from the book of Isaiah, uh, the book of Isaiah 43.3. Where is it? Isaiah 43.3. Isaiah 43 verse, uh, I mean, where is 43 here? 43 verse 3. 43 verse 3. See, for I am Jehovah your God. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is talking about God the Father, Jehovah. You've seen even the, the word Jehovah. I am Jehovah your God, the Holy One of Israel. Okay, your Savior. Have you seen Jehovah calling himself Savior? Okay, he is the Savior. I have given Egypt as a ransom for you, Ethiopia and Sheba in, Sheba in exchange for you. So, Jehovah is the Savior. Have we seen that one? Okay, let's also confirm it even more. I am Jehovah, verse 11, 
and besides me there is no savior you've seen jehovah saying besides him there is no other savior and also isaiah 45 let me show you also here isaiah 45 verse 21 you see jehovah himself saying there is no other savior and then i'll prove to you jesus also being the savior meaning they are one isaiah 45 21 where is it 21 make your report present your case let them consult together in unity uh who foretold this long ago and i de and declared it from the time past is it not i jehovah there is no other god but me you see there is no other god who can save a righteous god and a savior are you seeing the point here there is none besides him have you seen the point here? Jehovah is the Savior. Okay, okay, okay. Jehovah is the Savior. Now, let's look at Jesus. Is Jesus also the Savior? Is Jesus also the Savior? Let's look in the book of Luke. Uh, in the book of Luke. Uh, Luke, where are you? Here, Luke. And we go to chapter 2, verse 11. Okay. 2 verse 11 and we see is jesus the savior also and if he's the savior then it means jesus is god look at this bible for today there was born to you in david's city a savior who is christ the lord my goodness look at this a savior has born in david's city as a savior who is christ christ jesus the lord so what does it mean does it mean jehovah is the one who has been born no jehovah is god the father jesus is god the son and my friend he's here he's been born the savior let's also check the book of uh, acts i want to prove to you that jesus is god from your own bible from your own jehovah witness bible to prove that jesus is god acts 13 23 acts 13 23 where is it according to his promise from the offspring of this man god has brought to israel a savior jesus jesus is the savior are you seeing the point here so is there any contradiction when they say that jesus is not the savior is the archangel yes because jesus is god jesus is god and this one is completely explained here let's also check the book of titus i'll show you as many verses as i can to prove to you titus 1 verse 4 to prove to you from your own Jehovah's Witness Bible that Jesus is God. See, to Titus, a genuine child according to the faith we share, may you, may you have undeserved kindness and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus, our what? Our Savior. Christ Jesus, our Savior. How comes now Jesus has become the Savior and is the archangel? you see where the problem comes in now having said that having said that we we check now on whose name should we have faith whose name should we have faith okay whose name should we believe in are we talking about the name of jehovah or the name of jesus whose name does the bible tell us to have faith in and I'm going to show you from your own Jehovah's Witness Bible saying that we should have faith in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Okay? Look at this. In the book of John, let's come to John here. John, and we check 14. John 14, uh, 12. John 14, 12 where is it where is it uh, up here it says most truly i say to you whosoever exercises faith in me 
Who is talking here? Jesus. Whosoever exercises faith in me will also do the works that I do. He will do works greater than this because I am going my way to the Father. Have you seen the one talking is the Son and is telling us to exercise faith in him, the Son? So it means Jesus is God. Why should we put our faith in Jesus if he's not God? Are you seeing the point here? Look at the book of Acts 4 verse 12. Acts Acts 4 verse 12. Acts 4 verse 12. Furthermore, there is no salvation in anyone else, okay? For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name except the name of who? Jesus. These are the apostles speaking about Jesus. They are saying there is no other name by which man must be saved except the name of Jesus. Okay? Are you seeing the point here? Look at the book of Revelation. Revelation. Uh, we will check 2.3. 2.13. 2 verse 13. 2 verse 13. I know where you're dwelling. Okay? It's talking about the church of Pergamon, the letters, okay? It's saying, the Bible here is saying, I know where you are dwelling, that is, where the throne of Satan is, and yet you keep holding fast to my name. You see these people, they are holding fast to the name of who? Jesus. And you did not deny your faith in who? In me, Jesus. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed by your side where Satan is dwelling. You see, these people, they are holding fast the name of Jesus. Is it making some sense here, brothers and sisters? Let's also check John. Okay. John. John 20, 28. John 20. And then 28. John 20, 28. Where is it? I, in answer, Thomas said to him, My Lord and my who? My God. Was Thomas talking to Jehovah in heaven? No, he was talking to Jesus here on earth. He called him my Lord and who? My God. Jesus is God. Are you seeing the point here? Jesus is God. Thomas called him my Lord and my God. And it's in your Jehovah's Witness Bible. So this one is confirming so clearly that Jesus is God. Okay? And also, I'll take you to John 20, verse 31. Just see here. 31. But this have been written down so that you may believe that Jesus is is the Christ the Son of God? And because of believing, you may have life by means of his name. All right? So you see, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that you may believe and have life. My friends, who gives life if he's not God? Who else gives life? Are you seeing the point here? Are you seeing the point here? All right. Let's go also to Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. The book of Acts 2.38. It says, Peter said unto them, Repent, and let each one of you be baptized. Okay? Let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit. 
So in whose name are you being baptized? The name of Jehovah or the name of Jesus Christ? So are you baptized into the archangel? Really? No. Because Jesus is God. Are you seeing the point here? Okay. Let's also go to 1st John. 1st John. 1st John 3:23. 1st John 3 verse uh 3 verse 23. Where is it? It says, "Indeed, this is his commandment that we have faith in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he gave us a commandment so who should we have faith in Jesus are you seeing the point so now does that make Jesus created or the creator was Jesus created if he's the one giving us life was Jesus created I don't think so because Jehovah's Witnesses they teach that Jehovah created Jesus as an angel okay they say that Jesus is the is the is the archangel Michael that's what they say and that Jesus then created all other things what do the scriptures say let's look at what the Bible says concerning the father okay Mm. Concerning the Father. Let's see what the Bible says concerning the, the Father. On creation, on the matter of creation. Was it the Father who created all things? Or did the Father create the archangel, Michael, or Jesus, as they say? And then Jesus created everything else. He only created him alone because Jehovah's Witnesses, they say, God the Father, Jehovah, he created Jesus, who is Michael the Archangel, as they say. And then Michael the Archangel created all the other things. Now, let's see. Is it the Father or Jesus who created? Or did they create together because they were one? Did they create everything together because they are one? Now, I'm going back to your Bible so that I can prove it from your own Bible. The book of Isaiah let me show you the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 66 verse 2. Isaiah 66. Okay. And verse 2. And let's see what your Bible says concerning creation. Now, Isaiah, we know this is Jehovah. And it's going to be said here, God the Father. See what it says. My own hand has made all these things everything that you're seeing and this is how they all came to be declares jehovah you see the one speaking declaring it's jehovah to this one then i will look to the humble one and broken in spirit who trembles at my word so jehovah created everything now let's see if jehovah created everything then uh, where does jesus apply before I even go further, let me also show you another verse in Isaiah 44, verse 24. Okay. You see that Jehovah is the one doing everything. Verse 24, where is it? See, this is what Jehovah says. You are repurchaser. Who formed you since you are in the womb? I am Jehovah who made everything so jehovah made everything including the trees the plants uh, the people the the fish in the in the ocean the the, the earth that you are in the angels everything so if he made ev everything it means even uh, what we see then uh, jesus and god are one you see, I stretched out the heavens by myself and I spread out the earth. Who was with me? Are you seeing the point here? He's trying to say, no one else was with me. I was with myself. So it means God the Father and Jesus are one. So he was himself. 
the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, together as one, created everything. Are you seeing the point? Now, let's see. Let's see what Jesus says concerning creation. Okay? Was he there when creation was being done? Because God says, who was with me? Meaning he was alone. So was Jesus involved? What does he say about himself and, and, and creation? In the book of uh, John 1.13, John 1.3, sorry. See what Jesus says here. Okay? Or what is being spoken about Jesus here. John 1.3, it says, In response, Jesus said to him, Most truly I say to you, Unless anyone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you seeing? Are you seeing the point here? John 1. Uh, 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 no, I'm, I'm a bit lost here. Let me. Sorry, sorry. I was reading something different. Let me show you. John 1 3. I'm, I'm ahead of myself sometimes. John 1 verse 3. All things came into existence through him. And apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. Now, is this talking about Jehovah or is it talking about Jesus? Is it talking about Jehovah or is it talking about Jesus? It's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Are you seeing the point? Because it's talking about the word. In the beginning was the word. Look at the word, capital W, meaning who is that? Okay, let's put it like this. Who's, whoever is called the word, let's investigate. In the beginning was the word. So the word was in the beginning. And the word was with God, okay? So the one, whosoever is called the word, he was with God. And we know God is Jehovah. And the word was God. You see, they are changing. They are saying he was a God. Now, let's, let's see here. Let's see here in verse... Uh, 14. What does it say? So the word became flesh. So basically meaning word. He became flesh and resided among us and we had a view of his glory. A glory such as belongs to an only begotten son from a father. And he was full of divine favor and truth. So if that word was in the beginning, then it means the word was who? God. From your own Bible. From your own Bible, we are proving the existence of God, the Son. Are you seeing the point? God the Son and God the Father being one? Okay. Now, let's look at the status or the names and the titles of Jesus and Jehovah. Okay? The titles. Let's see first Isaiah 9.6. The book of Isaiah 9, verse 6. Okay? The titles. The titles. Verse 6. It says what? For a child has been born to us. A son has been given to us. And the rulership will rest on his shoulder. He will rule. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty who? Mighty God. Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Now, if this child born is the one called Mighty God and is the one called Eternal Father, the Prince of Peace, look at all those names. Do they apply to the same person or are they applying to two different people? That child will be called these names. Okay? He'll be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Are you seeing the child? Are you seeing the, the name that child will be given? So does it mean that Jesus, the child who was born, is God? Yes, because he's the eternal father. Jesus is the eternal father. Are you seeing the point here? Let's also see the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation 1, 8. 1 verse 8. And see what is being spoken of Jesus. 1 verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says Jehovah. Okay. Uh -huh. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The one who is and who was 
and who is coming the almighty so is jehovah the one who is going to come in the skies and everyone will see him is it jehovah who is going to come my friends if you don't believe that jesus is god then uh, i don't know i don't know because jehovah here is saying is will be coming the second time and we know the Bible tells us Jesus is coming back soon, the second time. So is it going to be Jesus or Jehovah? Who is going to come? Because here, there must be a contradiction then. If Jehovah is the one coming, then it means Jesus will be left in heaven. But if you believe that Jesus is Jehovah, then you believe in the Trinity, that Jesus is God. Are you seeing the point here? Is it making some sense? Let's also see Revelation 1, 17 to 18. Where is 17, 18? See, when I saw him, I fell as dead at his, uh, at his feet. And he said, and he laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. So John the Revelator saw Jesus here. And he, uh, 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 and he fell on his feet. Uh, oh, wait. Yes, yes, yes. I was looking for this. And the living one, and I became dead. But look, I am living forever and ever. Are you seeing the point here? Now, did Jehovah die here on earth? Or did Jehovah ever die? God the Father, did he ever die? No, this is Jesus. Jesus came and he dwelt with men and he died and he rose again. And now he's living forever. And he's the one being called here the alpha and the omega are you seeing the point here so jesus is god well proven let's go to revelation 22 verse 12 to 16. see again proving that jesus is god we see 12 to 16. look i am coming quickly and the reward and the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the same person, Jesus, who said there. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Happy are those who wash their robes so that they may have authority to go to the trees of life and they may gain entrance into the city through its gates. Are you seeing the point? Outside the, the, the dogs, those who practice spiritism and those who are secular and moral and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, are you seeing the point here? I who? Is it I, Jehovah? I, Jesus, sent my angel to bear witness to you these things for the congregations i am the root and the offspring of david and the bright morning star and the spirit and the bride keep on saying come and let anyone hearing say come and let anyone thirsting say uh, come and let one wishes uh, who wishes to take life's water free I am the bearing witness to everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of this cross. If anyone makes an addition to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this scroll. Guys, are you adding something? Are you changing something? Because the Bible says, and if anyone takes anything away from the words of this scroll or this prophecy and say that Jesus is not God, God will take his portion away from the, the trees of life and cut uh, him out out of the holy city are, are you seeing the point here are you getting the point so jesus is god he's the root and offspring of david the alpha and the omega okay i can go over and over and over revelation 21 6 to 7 go and read there i just don't have time to look on this hebrews 1 13 Hebrews 1.13 is talking about the same thing, that Jesus is God. And this one, I'm quoting from your own Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Now, let's talk about the truth and unity of the Trinity. 
how Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one, and they are all God. Yes, the Spirit is not the Son, and the Son is not the Father, and the Father is not the Spirit, and likewise. But they are all God. Now, let me explain to you in simple terms. We all know very well that we are three parts. You have your body, which we see, and you have your spirit, which I, I mean your soul and your spirit. So the three of them, they are you. But can you see your soul right now? Can you see your spirit right now? No. Take an example of a ball, a football. The football has three parts. It has the outer cover, outer cover which you can compare to the sun. And we have the tube, the tube that 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 inner thing which we put air inside there is called the tube. The tube is inside. And then we have the air, which is the spirit. Now, this is a good example to tell you that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. The way Jesus looks is exactly how the Father looks. So, Father, we can compare him to the soul. And the spirit is that is that being who is in the soul and he looks exactly like the father and like the son they look the same if you take a balloon and put some air if the balloon is a uh, oval it will mean the spirit is oval if the if uh, the balloon is a square the spirit is square so they look exactly the same but it's inside and without the spirit the the the, the soul cannot work and the body cannot work. Likewise, without this, this one cannot work. And this one, they're all the same. The only difference with God is because the three parts can separate themselves. And us, we cannot separate ourselves. That's the only difference because he is God. He can separate himself. Remember when Jesus was being baptized? God the Son was down here being baptized. And God the Holy Spirit was descending from heaven in a form of a dove. And God the Father was speaking from heaven, saying, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. You see, they could separate themselves, but for us, we can't. So, we have to understand that Jesus' substitutionary atonement was accepted for one reason. Okay? Jesus, his atonement was accepted for one reason. Because God accepts only his own his own righteousness. He cannot accept the righteousness of a man. He can only accept his own righteousness. The righteousness of man or an angel is insufficient to hold to the holy and perfect standard of God's righteous law. Are you seeing the point here? God cannot accept anyone else apart from himself. He is the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He cannot accept any other kind of righteousness apart from his own righteousness. That's why God came out of himself and went to dwell with men. So that he can save man from who? From the wrath of himself. I don't know. I, I know this is confusing. Sometimes it's really confusing. And I wish it... I wish to speak and uh, try as much as I can to unconfuse you. Now, you have to understand that the righteousness of a man or an angel is insufficient to hold up to the holy and perfect standard of God's righteous law. And Jesus was the only suitable sacrifice because he was the righteousness of God. And uh, as God's law required shed blood, Jesus took on flesh so that he might be a ransom for all who believe in his name. So God the Son came out of himself to become man so that he can die for the sins of everyone. Are you seeing the point? So you have to notice that if we understand Jesus to be God incarnate, okay, or the Jesus to be the image of the invisible God, then all the above verses that we have read, all those verses that we have read uh, above or before, they can be understood to be true and mutually consistent in their claims. 
They can also be understood clearly with plain reason taken as at face value. However, if we attempt to suggest that Jesus is something less than God, or, or we call him the Michael the Archangel, eh? okay, we, we try to say Jesus is Michael the Archangel, then these verses are mutually exclusive and cannot both be true. When they are taken in their natural context, you have to spiritualize them and spiritualize them and to try and look for other meanings. Therefore, the truth of God's word necessitates that we must come to another understanding. Okay? We must come to another understanding in which all scripture is unfied, uninterconnected, interdependent, and inerrant and true. And that unifying truth can be found only in the person and deity of who? Jesus Christ. My friends, may we see the truth revealed in scripture as it is, not as we would each have it to be. And may God receive all the glory because God saved us. God came out of himself and became man so that he can be able to save us. Okay? Are you understanding the point? And my friends, I don't know what to say. For those who say Jesus is the archangel Michael, I don't know. I don't know. Please get out of that and believe that Jesus is God and Jesus became flesh so that he can be able to save us through atonement. Through atonement. Okay? I know many people have many, many questions right now. And whatever question that you have concerning Jehovah's Witness and concerning this old doctrine of salvation and all those things, please just type them down and I will make sure that I will answer these questions. Like this, this, this topic... Just a subscriber, a friend, asked these questions and I and I decided to do some research so that I can answer you in truth and in spirit and in the word of God. Please, you can ask more questions. Whichever question that you have, please ask them. Okay? Ask any question. And for those who still don't understand why Jesus came, Jesus came because there was a bad news. There was really bad news. What was the bad news? Adam was created in the image of God. He was created sinless and without any, any dent or any problem. That was Adam. But because Adam was deceived, he fell and he died. Spiritually, he died. He may not have died immediately there, but he died spiritually. And that's why all of us, we are in the image of Adam. Remember, the Bible tells us we are in the image of Adam when we get uh, uh, born naturally born. We're in the image of Adam, not in the image of God. Why? Because we fell. See? And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Now, why is Adam getting children after his own image? Which kind of image is this? The fallen image. In that image of a fallen man, the image of a sinner. That is what really happened. And all through, we have been born in this fallen image of Adam. But guys, you have to understand, there is good news. The bad news is, if you stay in this image of Adam, the wages of sin is what? The wages of sin is death. You are supposed to die and go to hell. But the good news is that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So that whosoever will believe that this death of Christ was not in vain, will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Jesus came out of himself. God came out of himself and dwelt among men. He dwelt among men. The flesh, be uh, the God became, the word became flesh so that he dwelt among men. <coughs> Excuse me. God the Son became flesh. He dwelt among men so that whosoever will believe that Jesus is God and believe that Jesus substituted himself with you. You took his life and he took your death. My friends will be saved. You have to understand that. There are five points 
for you to be saved. Five points before you get saved. First, you have to understand that, my friend, I am lost. Unless you understand you are lost and you are in need of a savior, you cannot be saved. Understand you are lost. Number two is find the gospel. Gospel means good news. What is the good news? That Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the good news. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Now find the good news. The next thing is understand the good news. What really happened? What really happened? Because people think because I said a prayer, I prayed the sinner's prayer, I am saved. You are not saved because of a prayer. You are saved by believing, understanding what Jesus did. And you believe that's what saves you. So you have to understand the gospel. And after you understand the gospel, you believe the gospel. You believe for sure this would have been me on this cross. But Jesus died for me. He, he replaced himself here so that if I believe in him, I'll not perish and I'll have everlasting life. Then once you believe that, confess it out to God. Tell him, Jesus, I believe now that for sure you died for me, you were buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And you did this so that you can save me. Please be my Lord and my Savior. And my, my friends, if you do that, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified, and ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you a Jehovah's Witness? And have you been mixed up? And uh, is there something that you're not understanding? Please ask. And we'll try as much as we can by the power of the Holy Spirit to tell you and to help you. God, the Bible tells us that God does not take pleasure in the death of a sinner. You're a sinner and you deserve dying. He does not take pleasure in that. That's why God came out of himself and he, become, he became flesh so that he could die and save you because you are lost and a sinner. Unless you understand that, my friends, you'll be lost and heading to hell. Trying to save yourself and trying to do something to save yourself. If you enjoyed these videos, please give them a like. Also, you can... Uh, Share to your friends. Let them hear the word of God. And, and if you have a Jehovah's Witness a friend, please tell them. And if you're one, please listen over and over and read the, your, your, uh, those verses that are put, even in your own Jehovah's Witness Bible, and confirm if these things are true. Please be saved. You can also subscribe to watch more videos which we post each and every day. And hit the notification bell so that whenever we post, we can always notify you. And likewise, in our, in our description below, we have a couple of other channels that uh, are outside YouTube. Please go and check them out and share to your friends. Hope this has been a blessing to you. God bless you and have a good and a great, great time.